Hello guys, and this is Sean again, and also, well, first off, I'd like to say happy 4th of July to everyone in the U.S., and, I mean, enjoy it. Like, you have the one moment you can actually go and shoot out rockets and not be arrested for it. So take this opportunity. Well, two times. I think you can do it on New Year's. Certain areas. Do it. Do it legally. Guys, don't. Don't get caught. I didn't. I do not condone getting caught. But anyways, as you can see from the title, this video is going to be the second installment of the mini series you guys voted for in the in symbiotic relationships. This one is commensalism. It's I get this, you you're unaffected. It's where one animal gets something, the other one really doesn't care. It it's this is probably one of the most interesting because it's so odd. But we're going to start off with cattle egrets and more commonly seen with cows and cows and farms. Well, cattle egrets normally will eat insects or bugs and, or bugs and stuff, and being just the egret, it's hard to get to them. It's hard to find bugs. So what they'll do is they'll follow around herds of cattle, and like normally it would be like in the wild, it'd be buffalo or other larger animals while they're grazing. The animal, the animal who's grazing, gets nothing for this. But as it moves, it kicks up different bugs, and the cattle egrets follow them around to pick up the bugs that the, that the large animals will kick around. So, they get that amazing, I mean, so cool. And then you have, like, it, I'm sorry, my mind is moving at like 70 different objects at once, and it's, it's great. Promise I am not on drugs. It's just, I get so excited to talk about animals and also looking at my fish tank and all the fish are schooling and I'm like, yeah, I feel so classy. But <laughs> then you have um, another example of commensalism is in the oceans. You have remora fish. Normally you'll see these on sharks or whale sharks or whales, but, norm but these little fish have a little, have like on top of their head, it's like a sucker. And what they do so go and they'll latch on to fish, like to large predatory fish, while they're swimming, and they'll just hitch a free ride along along with the large fish. Now beyond that, they also get to pick, get like easy pickings when that animal eats. For example, if one connects to a great white shark, great white shark kills a seal. The remora gets easy pickings to the scraps and stuff from the kill, so it gets. It gets to eat really it gets to eat for free and it gets a free ride around the ocean like i mean just if you can like if you have the time look up the the roots of great white shark it's amazing it's believed they traveled by their that they travel by the stars because they spend most of the time up at the top of the water but they'll go from they followed a group of them that went from the southernmost cape of africa across the indian ocean to Australia, and I think it went somewhere else, in California, back and forth in like exact dates. So it's really cool. I mean, I personally think it's really amazing and interesting, but then again, I'm that weird animal guy. So, and this is my favorite, my favorite example of commensalism, pitcher plants. Now, here's a little backstory and this is from one specific species in I think it was either Cambodia or Malaysia can't remember off the top of my head but it lives in it lives in mountains so the soil isn't really the best it really lives really high up so it's really not the best even though it is a rainforest and even at that rainforest soil isn't really the best because there's so many plants pulling from it pulling from all the nutrients in it so the soil isn't that isn't so good so it's went to the it went to become a carnivorous plant of course has a little dip in it it's got a little acid well I say acid but it's not like if you touch it your fingers are just gonna be the the bone but it's like the stuff where sort of like stomach acid where when an insect falls in it's it decays in there 
and so the plant can eat it. Well, even with that, like it gets, a, it gets some pretty good nutrients from that, but there are a few things it can't get from the soil and it can't get from the insects. And this is where we enter its friend. Like there's a small mouse, like there's like a few different small mammals that live in the area. And this also answers a little bit of the pitcher plant shape. If you notice, pitcher plant is like, I always thought of it sort of like a tear shape, except for like a, the shape of the opening is sort of like a teardrop. Now, after learning this, I now think of it as a different way. The small mammals will use the pitcher plant as a toilet. One, to mark off different territory areas, and two, because it's easy way to put, like, if you're not trying to say you're there, but you have to go to the bathroom and other animals might be able to pick up the scent of you, a small mammal's poop, you go in a pitcher plant. That way, the acids will break it down faster. So, you poop in the pitcher plant, there you go. But, this is where it gets amazing, the pitcher plant actually evolved to be, like, evolved that tear shape, or now as I think of it, the toilet shape, to pick up, like to collect poop from different animals, that way it can get more nutrients that it wouldn't be able to get from the soil or from insects out of that. So then, pitcher plant has an amazing way of getting food. It's really cool. I mean, I, I can't think of many uses for poop. Dung beetles might be able to use them. Scarab beetles, maybe. Oh, well, yeah, scarab beetles are different from. I think they are. Have to look that up. But I mean, there are very few animals that have been able to use poop, and I'm really surprised that pitcher plants. Oh, well, they aren't animals, but pitcher plants have been able to figure that out. And that makes me wonder: what about um, Venus flytraps? I mean, they're from the poor soils of like swamp areas. So I wonder if that even has some amazing abilities to it that it uses like poop. I wasn't I wasn't expecting that one. But um yes, that's basically the it the it, really, Sean, that's that's what you're gonna call it? The it. That's good enough. That's the it of it. And I'd really like to say thank you for watching if you watched the whole thing. And also please come back and like see more because I plan on doing the next video which is parasitism par parasitism or parasitism however you want to say it I'm going to say parasitism because I really like it it sounds a little more professional so I feel really cool about it anyways I'm going to put that video up really soon I plan on doing it before Wednesday around before Wednesday and having Thursday be another video where you guys can vote on because the, well actually no I'll put it up Thursday that way you guys can vote on it since that's the end of the mini series. But here's the here's another thing. I actually found out a schedule. Yes, guys, we have a schedule. It's so cool. So ooh, Mondays and Thursdays, we're going to do like these the Kingdom series where I talk about an animal. You guys get to vote on it. These ones, well, unless it's a mini series, then we go until the end of the series and then you guys vote. But that's what we're going to be doing on Mondays and Thursdays because it gives me enough time to go through all the votes, give you guys time to vote, and then have time to do the research on whatever you guys voted on. Okay, that was wonderful. And then when's on, and then in between that, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give specific days like Wednesday or Thursday, or Wednesday or Tuesday because it's going to happen randomly. I'll do videos on tank, on my tank. Also, I plan on doing a video on the dry season water change, and I'll tell you, I'll show you guys what that is very soon, if not this week, then mid next week, because, and also, I don't think we'll be able, unless I'm going to pre-record it, I don't think we'll be able to have a video next Monday, because I'm going to be going on a wonderful campus visit. It's going to be great. I'm going to be going down there. I'll have I'll get to pop meet my possible professor. Well, if I end up going to the school, that would end up being my professor. I'm gonna go on a campus tour, 
and I'm going to get um, admission information from the school. And I'll be there Monday and Tuesday next week. So it all depends on how that goes. I might just pre-record the video that you guys want, or I'll just record it while I'm there, which I don't know how it would work, but I think it'd be pretty cool. But also I plan on doing a video of that school while I'm there, because that'd be, I mean, uh, it adds to all the amazing videos that are already out on YouTube of the school, and it's so cool. So with that, I think I've kept you guys long enough. So I'm just going to look at my fish real quick, because yeah, they're all schooling. Uh, even though the light turned off, it's still cool that, that they're schooling. Okay, well, after I had my little moment, huh, have a great time, and I'll see you guys later.